North America is bracing for a breathtaking celestial event, a total solar eclipse. This astronomical marvel occurring today will see the moon completely obscure the sun for a brief period, transforming day into twi twilight. This next report explains how this rare phenomenon is not just a visual spectacle, but also exciting for both astronomers and astrologers. It's a total eclipse when the sun's corona or its outer atmosphere becomes visible, offering a window into the stellar processes hidden by the sun's usual brilliance. For the scientists, the prospect of replicating the famed Eddington experiment is particularly exciting in an eclipse. The experiment verifies Einstein's theory of general relativity. Scientists gain aim to use more sophisticated equipment during this eclipse to refine our understanding of gravity and the universe's fabric. During this eclipse on April 8th, uh, I'm going to be performing the modern Eddington experiment, which is an experiment that measures the tiny deflection of light, bending of light, as it passes the sun on its way into our camera. And this is what's called the North Node. Then there are the astrologers who find the eclipse holds clues to people's future. So that adds to the Trump's chart, the eclipse, not surprisingly, falls into the ninth house. Ninth house is legalities. He has a bevy of legal issues right now. And it's eclipsed. So he doesn't have the full clarity. He's basically in the dark. And what's really interesting is Mercury is retrograde. So maybe one of these gag orders could stick. <laughs> one aspect that makes a solar eclipse so captivating is its exclusivity. Unlike Earth, most planets in our solar system lack moons large enough to completely block their stars. This cosmic alignment where the moon's apparent size perfectly matches the sun's is a testament to the delicate balance of our solar system. Essentially what they'll see over the course of two hours or so is the moon very slowly moving across the face of the sun, sort of looking like it's almost eating the sun out of the sky. And when it reaches that point of totality, it will be darker, it will be colder as well because the moon is not only blocking the sun's light, it's blocking its warmth as well. The upcoming eclipse is expected to draw millions of sky watchers. An estimated 34 million people reside within the path of totality, a narrow band stretching from Mexico to Canada. However, the prospect of cloudy skies casts a shadow of uncertainty over viewing parties. Happy watching, but don't forget your solar viewers to keep your eyes safe. All right, our correspondent Susan Tehran is now joining us live from New York. Susan, good to see you. I see that the timing for uh, New York is 3.18 p.m. to 3.22 p.m. What's the time now? So right now we're uh, a little past noon, 12.35ish. Uh, uh, so we have about a couple of hours until the solar eclipse, it's 90% of what we're going to see here in the city start occurring. And the excitement is really high. I'm coming to you from New York City's Central Park right now. And behind me, while you don't see many people, this is the part of the park with no obstructed uh, view. And it's going to be very crowded. People are already coming because we have been advised uh, to get to the spot that we want to get early because of congestion and traffic and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, everyone seems prepared. We have our safe solar NASA uh, authorized uh, glasses with us, which is probably the most popular commodity right now. It was being given out for free at public libraries and then stores uh, started 
really selling out and there were long lines in many stores, but hopefully and ultimately everybody got a chance to get their hands on one, at least those that want to watch the eclipse. It's interesting to note that there are a lot of watch parties as well mm -hmm. at many restaurants and bars that have rooftops. So it's good for business as well. So around 2 o'clock, 2.15, that's when we're going to start seeing it. It'll peak around 2.30, 2, uh, excuse me, 3.30, 3.45, and then by by in the middle of the 4 p.m. hour, uh, it's going to sort of move away from the sun, the moon. Susan, you did talk about the excitement that uh, uh, New Yorkers are experiencing right now. Scientists are saying that uh, it will be dark and it will be cold. Are they prepared for the cold? <laughs> Yeah, in many parts of New York State, definitely, uh, I think people are prepared considering the fact that there's so many tourists really traveling by Niagara Falls, Buffalo, and whatnot. But we have been very lucky here in New York City. Uh, I was talking to Molly about uh, half an hour ago. It was completely sunny here. And by the time the eclipse happens, we're expecting 64 per degrees of Fahrenheit weather. We may see some clouds, but as for now, it seems like it's clear skies. Uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Don't go just yet because um, I just want to give our viewers a total uh, time span of how the eclipse is going to happen. The solar eclipse will make landfall on Mexico's okay. Pacific coast at 11.07 a.m. Then as the moon's shadow travels northeast, it will cross into Texas at 1.27 p.m and sweep across more than a dozen U.S. states, a dozen U.S. states, ending in Maine at 3.35 p.m. and into Canada. The eclipse will exit continental North America from Newfoundland at 5.16 p.m. Again, I'm talking to our correspondent Susan Tehrani, who is in New York. How is the weather holding up? as there were apprehensions that cloudy sky may obscure the solar eclipse. Like I asked you, is it going to be cold? Yeah, Eric, uh, you know, today has really been uh, the first day that is not a cold spring day. So like I said, no jinxing, keeping our fingers crossed that it's going to stay this way until the afternoon. Forecasters say that we are in luck at the peak of the eclipse, as you mentioned, which is around 325 to 335 p.m. Uh, we're expecting really good temperatures, about 64 degrees, and they said that the clouds aren't really going to obstruct the view as much as they thought beforehand. But we'll have to wait and see. Nonetheless, New York City is going to be 90 percent uh, of we'll see 90 percent of the eclipse as opposed to upstate like i mentioned where really you see um the 100 percent of it and just really quickly this eclipse is most noteworthy than the one in, from 2017 because uh, they're saying that uh, the sun is a lot more active than it was back in 2017 when we had a similar eclipse mm -hmm. so this is uh, a decade long event it happens like yeah. at least in 10 years. Do we know the numbers in New York of, of those people who are waiting to see this uh, phenomenon? We do know that from 2017, the people that are in the path of this eclipse in North America are two times, three times the number that they were back then. So, for example, if they were about uh, 10 million people, at least near the New York area, that's going to be about uh, twice as much, would be about 21 million people. And then in other places, you know, it'll be like three times as much. So a lot of people will be watching, like you mentioned, you know, for many, it's going to be a once in a lifetime experience. And also, really, after that uh, earthquake that we felt that was very rare on Friday, mm. um, this phenomena has really also generated a lot of conversation and talking points among New Yorkers, uh, not only on the street, but on social media as well. So uh, I think everyone is uh, excited to see what's going to happen. All right. Thank you, Susan. Tehrani in New York, wait for the solar eclipse and tell us your experience later. For all the latest news, download the Wii on app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.